Most of the data collected today is for European and European descended populations. It's about 80%. The rest of the data is mostly East Asian, so we don't know that much about Africans or African Americans. We don't know that much about Native people of the Americas generally. So we assume, at least here at the NBDC, that because Native people in the Americas were here by themselves anywhere between 15,000 to 40,000 years, that they're by definition, going to have changes that don't exist anywhere else on the planet. And so far, the data that we do have about these populations in the Americas, that does seem to be true. NBDC is a indigenous-led biorepository and research facility located within the our exterior boundaries of a tribal jurisdiction, the Cheyenne River Sioux Indian Reservation. So we have some autonomy from the federal government for data which we're focusing on, which would be Native American data or indigenous data. It puts it under a government that has a Indians or Native Americans as their focus. Indigenous peoples have historically been the targets of extractive research, and that has led to little to no benefit for indigenous peoples. Um, as particularly in genomics, um, that research in, done in extractive ways exposes communities to harms and risks of possible misuse, uh, but also deprives Indigenous communities of the potential benefits. It's imperative that scientists first uh, meet and uh, develop a rapport with the people of that community, not just the leadership, to fully explain the purpose for conducting the study or for collecting the data. Based on the lack of that happening um, in, in the last century, there's a lot of mistrust when it comes to non-local uh, scientists or even non-Indigenous scientists trying to conduct studies within indi Indigenous communities. One of the big things with Indigenous people is the, the protection of sovereignty and en encourage the people that um, what we're doing scientifically is not something to compromise or, or violate your sovereignty as, a, as an, an indigenous person. So we have to educate tribal council on what you're doing. You're not doing anything to pull any sovereignty from them or any responsibility away from their programs. The amazing thing about data in general, especially in the biological sciences, is its open-ended nature. You know, we don't know what advancements in scientific theory or practice will allow us to learn about people in the world through a piece of data. And so the exciting thing about a project like the Native Biodata Consortium is that it's storing this, this data that has undetermined potential for bettering indigenous communities and lives. Going forward, things should be done by indigenous communities, native communities, and, and other peoples of color for themselves. Companies like the Native Biodata Consortium will be there to help them so they don't have to turn to, to corporate America or to big universities to get, that, to get that help. We have the scientists, we have the equipment, we have the expertise, um, we have all the knowledge needed to do all the stuff they're doing, but we're putting the participant first and we want the benefits to go back to the communities that the participants come from. We have a number of young indigenous scientists who are coming up now and one of the things that they are doing is many of them are engaged both in um, outreach into their own and other indigenous communities and actively working to bring those indigenous knowledges into their labs and into their ways of thinking about genomics alongside uh, their work in the lab. I'm really excited to see the future of data and health innovation in indigenous communities that we're really starting to see data STEM economies uh, and bringing these types of data skill sets and toolkits to communities so that we can not just take part in the research as passive participants, but really become active parts of, of research and build these types of research models moving forward. These technologies are very powerful in that they can collect data very quickly and reveal things that are very in-depth about a person, their family, their community, their neighborhoods, but it also can be shared very quickly across the world jurisdictionally where you don't have any control and nobody really has any regulatory authority over it. We feel that the NBDC is positioned 
to at least raise the issue, is everybody having an equal say? Is everybody having an equal benefit? That's where we're positioned right now, is to use the indigenous context and the indigenous history of exploitation, extraction, erasure, and disempowerment and say, this will be the case for everybody if you're not using these technologies carefully.